Hey everyone, it's Jack. And today I want to talk about Deepin. Deepin from Deepin Technologies. Deepin Desktop is a really a pretty amazing desktop and I kind of like to explore it a little bit more in depth with real hardware. This won't be a virtual box install. This will actually be on real hardware. And I thought this would be really interesting because now Deepin 20.2.2 is out. I'm out here at the website right now, but first, Hmm, ha ah, ha next Jack will try Gen2 install, lol. Ah, Mustafa, yes, that's a good one. But, gotta tell you, DT beat me to it over at DistroTube. I was just about to do a Gen2 video, and he jumped in and got me. That's right, Jackie Quack, I beat you to it. Ah, 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 in your face. Ah, ah, ah. Oh yeah? Well, at least I'm not an alien duplicate like you. Hmm. What? What? Oh, great. You just had to bring that up, didn't you? You just had to remind me. Why? Why? Uh, uh... Works every time. <laughs> but seriously, you have to check out DT's video. It's really good. He did a great job doing the Gen 2 explanation on installing it and all that. Really, if you want to install it, great video. Totally worth the uh, watch there. I even left a link down in the description below just for your convenience in case you're watching this a year from now and you have no idea what I'm talking about. If you got a lot of time on your hands, maybe you're just starting a 30-year stretch in Leavenworth Prison and you don't know what to do, or you might have a government contract where you're getting paid by the hour, that would be another perfect opportunity to use Gentoo. So if you got lots of time, Go try out Gen 2 and enjoy. <laughs> All right, that's my response. So anyways, back to Deepin. This is about a two gig ISO, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this and then we're gonna install it on hardware and see how it goes. Really looking forward to trying this and seeing what it's like. See you after the download. Okay, we are now inside the live environment. And so here we are at our Deepin desktop and in case you're wondering how I got in the live environment, because when you boot to the ISO, you'll get into the, what do you call it, the DOS, like the terminal installer, and you don't actually go into the live desktop. So what I did was I kind of went in the laziest way possible. After I got to the installer, I just pressed Control Alt F2, and that put me into another terminal, and then I just typed in Start X. And after I did that, I just waited a minute or so, and then here I am in the live desktop. So that's how I got here, just in case you're curious. So this is looking nice. This is the live environment. It looks like we got a welcome screen here. That's probably a video, I suppose. Nice. So it's kind of like the intro. Very smooth and polished. I like it. Almost has a 3D effect there. And a little bit of a quick video tour. That is really cool. And there's our toolbar, lightning smooth. I mean, light smooth. Wow, so that's very cool. Uh, I guess that could just keep going on for days. So let's hit next and see what we got. So here it's giving us a little tour of our desktop modes. We can choose between fashion and efficient. Might as well go with a fashion. That's kind of the more modern. And then we have effect mode and normal mode. Effect mode is going to use more resources as opposed to normal mode. But in effect mode, you get those cool effects and so forth. So that's typically the price you pay for some transparency and some other cool things. And then your normal mode, of course which is where it is set right now by default. And it's also reminding us that we can just change it in the control center under personalization. Great. And right now by default, we're set at Bloom. So if we wanted to change it, we could do that right here. But I think Bloom is good, so I'm gonna stay with that. Let's go with the done. Oh, looks like we're starting off with a pretty clean desktop here. 
nice we have our other settings and stuff here on the side nice so let's jump up to our installer and let's give this a quick install and see how it goes ah and there's our taskbar down below so once i launch the installer we got it showing up down here nice so we got our browser our file manager app store album wow i'm looking forward to exploring this let's run through the installer by default uh, chinese is the default language and then we'll just switch it to english here and i have read and agreed to the end user license agreement why don't we take a quick look at this real quick and here it is. Yeah, this is different than a lot of distros. You got to agree to the user agreement here. Interesting. And so we go down here and blah, 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 blah. I agree to sell my firstborn to the Chinese government. All that good stuff. <laughs> Ooh, number 12 here is particularly interesting. Uh, check this out. This EULA is published in simplified Chinese and English. No matter which language version you read, the simplified Chinese version shall prevail. Wow, so that means the English version isn't worth crap. Suppose the Chinese version says, we have the right to take all your information that you have on there, even if it's your private bank account numbers, social security, and all that other good stuff, and you can't do a thing about it, too bad. But the English version says, no, we would never do anything like that. We respect your privacy and your valuables. So, no, we're good. Uh, then, I guess if you made us think about it, they could say, well, we told you the Chinese version prevailed, right? Not the English. So, there. <laughs> uh, yes. Seriously, though, I'm pretty confident that the English version probably exactly parallels the Chinese version. There's probably some other meaning to that that I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say though, but don't know what to think about that. I guess if I was just a tad more paranoid, I'd probably turn around right now and leave. However, I'm not that overly paranoid. <laughs> and I think if there was a problem with that, there's so many out there that somebody would have spotted it by now. So yeah, I think we're good there. But I just had to throw that in there and do a rant. And with that, I guess I'll hit the back button and then I'll say, okay, I trust you guys. <laughs> and then we'll hit next. So here we can create our petitions or just go with a full disk. If you just have a full empty disk that you just want to go over, uh, or if you're in virtual, of course, uh, just stick with full disk there and you're good. So. Now it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna delete all these partitions with all my gold on it. And so let's continue. I'm ready to take one for the team. All right, now it's starting to install. So we are at our install and we are at 0%. And it'll probably hang at five for a little bit while it unzips the image. And then it's gonna zoom right up. It should only take maybe five minutes or so to install this. And after the install is complete, I'll be right back. And we'll continue. All right, the install is complete. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot. Okay, and here we are at our login screen. Impressive right off the bat. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And here we are. Wow, what an impressive looking desktop already. Nice. That was one of the first things that really impressed me was how great the desktop looked. I'm just going to scoot down here a little bit real quick. There we go, just for symmetry. <laughs> I had booted in a little bit earlier and installed Inkscape, so that looks good too. And the overall look here is just totally outstanding. Here we have our bottom toolbar, our taskbar, which looks great. Here we got our show desktop, our menu of course, or launcher as they put it. And as you can see, it's got the horizontal flow to it, just like you have in GNOME 40. So I'm liking that. And this toolbar looks great. And over here we have our launcher. And when I hit that, there's our menu. And so by default, the menu is in a smaller mode, but there's two sizes here. Uh, this is kind of the more traditional looking menu with the categories over here on the side and favorites and so forth. 
So that's pretty nice. I like that. And then if you go over here, this will expand it into a full size screen. Then you can see everything all at once, which is really cool. And it has a horizontal scroll to it. That's another thing that's kind of cool. Very nice. And I'm just rolling my mouse wheel right now to get that scroll in there. And then up here, we got our categories. So if I hit that, then we can look at it by categories. And again, it can scroll over if you just drag it with your mouse. Or you can come up here and click on the categories. Right now we're in the networking internet category here. We have browser, mail, and a downloader. Nice. And then here we have our music clients, which it looks like it's using Deep and Music Player, I think. Pretty interesting. And I've never used that before. I'm just going to go ahead and exit there. And then if we pop down here and oh, check that out. It's showing where I left off. That's really impressive. Typically that doesn't happen with a menu. Even when I was doing my recent review of GNOME and going into the menu all the time, every time I got into the launcher area, I'd have to go back to where I was because it would always restart back at the beginning and I'd have to go and scroll back through to where I was. But this one takes you right there where you left off. I really like that. I'm not sure I've seen that really in any other distro. At least not that I can think of off the top of my head. So that's something that really stands out and I like that. That's good to know. Voice notes, camera, very good. So I really like that. So if I were to launch Inkscape, for example, and Inkscape is something that I installed just before the video because there was something I noticed in the software center. So Inkscape is open, that's cool and groovy. And so if I were to close this, go back into my launcher, I'm still in the category I was in. So if I wanted to launch something else that was related to image, I'm just right here. Really convenient. Since I'm on the subject of Inkscape, when I installed it, I was in the App Store here. And so I installed it through the App Store. Typically, I like using the terminal to install using, in this case, apt install. However, there was something I noticed here. This is the software center, which is really nice looking. Uh, it does have Chinese over here in the menu. So that's something that I guess they haven't really gotten worked out yet for the English speaking side of the world, but no real big deal. Uh, we got the universal icons here, so I can still tell what these categories are related to anyway. So that's okay. And then of course we got our search. So when I installed Inkscape, I just got up here in the search bar here and then did a search for Inkscape without the R. <laughs> and here we are. And here it's showing you can open it because it's already installed. However, if I click on it, I can see the details here, which is really nice and the ratings. So that's all very cool. But one thing I did notice though, is I was thinking to myself, suppose I didn't want Inkscape anymore and I wanted to get rid of it. I don't see any remove option here, only open. So that's a little weird. I'm not really quite sure from the software where center, at least it's not obvious anyway, how you would remove this other than using the terminal. Yeah, kind of strange. Opens my only option and I'm assuming it's gonna open if I hit it, which it does. And in our burger menu, we just got our settings, check for update. So yeah, really nothing, nothing there to remove it. <laughs> so I would say that to remove it, you still need to go into the terminal. To me, that's no big deal, but I just thought I'd point that out because I noticed that. So if I did want to remove it, I suppose I could just come up here and type terminal and then just open that baby up and do a sudo apt remove Inkscape. And there we go. Easy peasy. I believe. Oh, maybe not so easy peasy. It says that Inkscape is not installed because I didn't install it using the terminal, apparently, apt-get. So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that once you install it using the App Store, that you probably have it forever. <laughs> Unless you can do it from here in the menu. Let's try that. We have remove from desktop, uh, uninstall. There we go. Okay, that's the key, uninstall. So if you install it through the App Store, 
All you got to do is simply right click the icon, use uninstall, confirm, and it's a done deal. So that's how it's done. We both discovered it together. Yay! All right. So we both learned something out of that one, or at least I did anyway. And there's our message that it was removed successfully. Nice. Just out of curiosity, I don't expect it to be, but let's see if HTOP is on here. Type that in there. Not, nah, that's all right. How about top? That should be there. There we go. And so far it looks like we're using, wow, looks like about 784 megs. That's pretty impressive. Uh, with a decked out distro like deepen with all the effects and everything else, the bling, I was kind of expecting that to be a lot higher. So uh, I'm impressed. That's good. Very efficient use of memory there. So I'll jump out of there now and let's explore a little more. So these are our graphics. And then if I come up here, then we have our office stuff here. And by default, it looks like we got LibreOffice installed, probably LibreOffice Fresh, I would assume. And our text editor and document viewer, nice. And over here is our category with our, probably our system stuff. So we have our file manager, app store, which we were just looking at there a little earlier. Our terminal, a deepened manual, that's pretty handy. Input method. So if you have another language and you want to change your input method to say pinyin, uh, if you're going with Chinese, or some other language like Arabic or Swahili or Russian. <laughs> so very good. Nice to see back in the menu. And I still like how that leaves off. That's really cool. And we have our system monitor, something that's always totally handy. And that's uh, a really nice looking system monitor, actually. Right now it's showing that we're using about 12.6% CPU. I think that's relating to, and about one and a half Gs of memory out of 11 or with 11.5 remaining. So it's got like 12.6 megs here kind of allocated. In this computer, there's 16 gigs all together. And then we got our WAP down here and it's using very little of our swap partition right now. So that's always good. And then our network stats here and our disk writing and read write. So very nice, very detailed. And over here we have our different views here. So we got our, we can sort by name and CPU. So if something's eating up the CPU, we can go up here and just kind of sort by CPU and see what's using the most, which right now is system monitor <laughs> and how much memory. And again, if we go by the most memory, that would be this guy, our deep and lock, which is using, looks like about 210 megs. Nice. And then over here, uh, another a view here. We can look at all processes as opposed to my processes. And then these are all just applications. So that's kind of how that works. And then over here we can see our services and see what's running. That's always good. So if you got a service that's giving you trouble, you can turn it off here. You can say, Bluetooth, you're giving me problems. And then you can go ahead and just start it, stop it or restart the service and so forth. And by default, this is an auto startup. And same with processes, something's giving you trouble. And I like how they got the applications kind of separated by the other processes. That makes it really nice. So here again, you can end process, suspend, change a priority, and all that good stuff. Or kill the process if it's really being nasty and it just won't go. <laughs> we have computer boot maker, that's nice. So it makes it real easy if you want to create an ISO and create a boot CD. So oh, very simple, just drag and drop. And you pretty much got yourself a CD and device manager. That looks interesting too. So here we got our overview of our system. Wow, and it's even showing all kinds of details. Our monitor, the CD-ROM, memory, and what kind of memory. That's really great. Uh, the type of motherboard, which on this computer is a Sony Bio and our Intel processor. Yeah, very good. 
and all these details here related to hardware and so forth. So here we got our CPU information. Wow, this is really detailed. I didn't realize you could see all this in deep in. So that's a really nice utility. Man, I gotta tell you. Information about our display adapter and about our sound. That is really impressive. And it also has a more. <laughs> wow. All right, well, totally didn't expect to see that. And then of course our log viewer. So when things go wrong, we can go in here and check out our log. Another thing that's really handy. This is kind of something I haven't really seen laid out like this since my Windows days. Uh, you got your system logs here, application logs, really nice. So when you have different events happening, uh, even on your boot and shutdown, very detailed. This is great. DPKG and your Xorg, that is super impressive. And then you need root privileges to view your boot log. Then you got your kernel log. Again, requiring boot privileges, but you know, if, if I was a kernel, I'd want certain people with certain privileges too. So there, at least a major, maybe I would let it slide, but being a kernel, yeah. Excellent. And then our last, I believe is like an other category. And here we can leave user feedback. So apparently you can go in here and give your two cents. And that's pretty smart. You got to know Chinese to leave feedback. Hmm. That's down on the negativity, I suppose. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, yeah, that's nice. I like the fact that they uh, do encourage feedback. And I'm sure you can do English, no problem. So that's great. And since we're in here, this is the browser. And I'm not sure what this browser is based on. In Deepin, it's just simply called Browser, but it's probably, I would assume, based on Chromium, maybe. Uh, yeah, we see Chrome settings here. I would say it's based on, most likely, Chromium. So really a nice looking browser. So Chromium's good. I like that idea. Or a default browser that's not Firefox or Chromium specifically. Uh, that's not a bad choice when you want to kind of have your own identity as a distro. So I totally get that. So those are, with the exception of Inkscape, our default apps that are on there. And then down here we have our toolbar, of course. If I was to scooch up just a tad, we could just kind of take a look at this taskbar real quick. And here we have our notifications. And I like this, how this kind of pops out. That's really cool. This is our notification center. And a long time ago, this used to be like in version 15. This is kind of where the settings used to be and you had all the, your categories for your settings all listed down here all this stuff up here was all a list of all your different settings and you could just click on down through the list and then you could change your settings from here and that was kind of nice i i like that it kind of reminded me of budgie at the time uh, however i like the newer setup better because it gives you room for more options back in the day deepen was not very configurable uh, you were pretty much stuck with the look that you were given and there wasn't much you could do to change the theming and all that other than what was given here we have our volume control our audio control stuff here and then our wireless and bluetooth which is currently turned off and this little guy will close this little part of the task manager here so you can open and close so if you want more room on your bar you can just shrink it right there and then over here, we got our onboard keyboard. So if you hit that, that'll just pop right up. And then you can type your stuff, click it again to close it. So that's handy if you got a touch screen or if you're on a, a pad or something. Here's our log out and restart and all that. So this is really nice. I probably won't click anything here. <laughs> so to get out of it, I'm just gonna go off to the side here and just click and that'll close it. And then here's our clock and the clock is actually off here uh, it's not really zero hours it's more like 12 30 in the afternoon so i guess i'll have to change that time zone and when we click on it we get a calendar wow that's a gorgeous calendar check that out man that's really beautiful 
a lot of desktops the calendar just kind of pops up here above the clock and it's usually pretty small this is really big i really like that it just looks like a real calendar <laughs> very well done that's something else i'm really impressed with and then here you can go ahead and hit this and you can add an event here and put it in your calendar so that way when something's coming up you can be reminded of it and then in our burger menu you can even adjust your theming right now it's using the system theme which is a light theme but we could also make this calendar dark theme if we wanted to keep our light theme we can differentiate this way and vice versa so that's really cool and that dark theme looks pretty nice actually but for now i think i'm going to put it back to system theme because we're going to tweak the th system here in a little bit anyway so there's our calendar and i gotta say that's super impressive as well and then here's our dustbin or trash can recycle bin i guess is the other name <laughs> so there we go and not surprisingly it's empty being a new install all fresh and everything so that's that part so that's kind of cool i guess that means i can slide down again there we go and then of course here we got apps pinned to our taskbar our file manager browser app store album which is not sure what that is okay photos nice so you can store your photos in here put them in an album so just hit import and then grab your photos which i don't have any on here right now obviously <laughs> and then our music player which we took a look at earlier briefly and so that's probably a great music player most likely it's got a minimal effect on it i'm gonna go ahead and close that and if it were me i would probably by default just have it exit and without asking again however everybody's different so it's nice that they give you the choice to suit that to your taste and then our terminal settings which is currently open nice and then over here we have show desktop which is good and then our multitasking view so here we can kind of see everything that's open on this desktop and then it shows the next desktop over which has a different wallpaper nice so here's our second desktop and nothing's open on this one but if i wanted to go there here i am desktop number two really cool and I think I can probably access that multitasking menu using alt tab as well or not but I know I can do it here and so I'm gonna have to find the keyboard shortcut for that which I'll have to look when we get in our settings so I'm back into desktop one I think I could probably use super arrow there we go okay our super arrow key is what it is so I just did super right arrow and super left arrow apparently i have the apparently it's also opening the menu because if you just hold the super key then you're going to see your menu after you let up on the key so if you just momentarily press it and let up on it it'll bring your menu up but if you hold it down and then use your arrow key it kind of does both <laughs> slides over so apparently they're kind of sharing uh, keystroke sharing there and the addition of the arrow will slide over the desktop as well. But again, all that stuff can be adjusted. But I like the fact that I can access the launcher here just by tapping the super key. So that's good to know, glad to see that. <laughs> and it's still leaving off in the same place where I left off. Double glad to see that. Kind of saves the trouble of having to have a favorites menu actually, in a way, even though it's there. So now let's jump into our settings and see what's new in here. So here are settings. Back in the day when I was using 15, again, I was, this is what used to be all over in the side panel, and now it is here. And really nice looking layout, and I like the way the icons are designed in the new thing here. So let's check out our accounts here. Take a look at it. And here's where you can change your avatar. And I kind of like the default, really, with the flower in there. But here's some of the other ones. Uh, some things we've seen before. There's the putty tat. I think I'm gonna go with that. That's kind of cool. Looks a little bit like me. 
same fur and everything. Hmm. Fascinating. And so here is where you can change your password, set it to auto login or login without a password. Wow. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. Well, that's also handy. I'm not sure I'd want to log in without a password, unless it was a guest, I suppose, user. Here's where you would create your user. And so you could create a guest and then log in without a password. That would, would be really handy, especially if you're using this in some kind of work environment with a computer that you want to make available to the public and have special guest permissions set up, then that would be handy. Now, if somebody wants to do a presentation or whatever, you don't have to worry about people getting stuck on the password. <laughs> and then here's your Deepin ID, and that's something I think the, you use in the App Store and so forth. Kind of similar probably to like your Apple ID on an iPhone or something to that effect. However, this is only supported in mainland China currently, at least at the time of this video. If you're not in mainland China, then that's probably not going to do you much good here. <laughs> Then we have our display settings. And one thing that impresses me is that this automatically set it up to duplicate for my display because it detected my HDMI cable that's hooked up to my capture card and set it directly to duplicate monitors. So I didn't have to worry about a second monitor being detected and throwing me over on the other screen. <laughs> Very cool. Then we have our display scaling here, all the way up to, it looks like 1.25 for this setting. And we're at a 1920 by 1080 resolution with a 50 hertz refresh rate. And standard rotation, nice. Then here we can set our default applications. Looks like it's really easy peasy to set your defaults. If I were to have more browsers on here, then you'd see more in the list. Currently, there's only browser that's installed, but if I had Firefox and Chrome, that would also be here in the list. And then we have our mail clients, which I never really use. So that's default applications. And now, and you notice here the, the list changes when you go into something. So we can either be out here, or when we go in something like default applications, then we can run down the list here. So it's kind of a different layout. So now if we move on to personalization, here's where our theming is. And by default, we're using light. However, I can switch to dark if I want to, or auto, which apparently auto detects your, maybe the lighting in the room, or maybe the time of day. I'm not really quite sure how the auto determines, you know, whether to go light or dark. But I think I'm gonna kinda go with the dark theme. I like the dark theme. Now let's see how the menu looks. Yeah, about the same there. But if I had the menu shrunk, like if I like the smaller version better, then you would see that the menu is dark with a little transparency going on in the background and even a blur effect it looks like. Very nice. That is cool. The whole system just oozes with gorgeousness. And then of course you can adjust your accenting, which is here we have blue right here by default, but we could go with red. Wow, that red really pops. That looks so good with the black. I like that. Just might keep that one. Then we got our orange. Also looks fantastic. Then kind of a goldish color. Then we have green. which also looks great. A teal. And then a darker blue. Now that looks even better than the default blue, actually. And then purple. Looks really great. Love purple. I have a Dracula theme on my daily driver. And it has purple highlighting in there. And I really like the purple. And the Dracula, it's a little bit different shade, I think. But not too different. That's kind of a tough call there with the red. And then we can use a dark, like a gray with the dark, which also looks great. I think I'm going to go with the red. That just pops so nice with the black. That's a color combo that's pretty irresistible. I like that. And then we have our icon theme. And as you can see by default, we got like papyrus, vintage, bloom is our default theming for icons. And then we got bloom classic and bloom dark. And classic is kind of what was used in the older versions of Deepin. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to stick with bloom there. And then here we can change our cursor theme. And I like the default probably the best, I would say. 
But if you like it a little darker looking, then you could go with the Bloom Dark. But I'm thinking this looks the best. So I'm gonna stick with this guy. And then of course you got the old standby Ed Weta. And then here's our fonts. And so these are the fonts that are installed by default, which is not a bad selection actually. So there you go. Also, I wanna point out, this is something I also discovered not too long ago. In your file manager, I remember back in the day when I was using Deepin, you were very limited on your theming and all that. And typically in other distros, you can, I'm gonna turn on my hidden files. You have your icons, your dot icons, dot themes, and so forth, dot fonts. And back in the day, when I was using earlier versions of Deepin, on other distros, you can go in and add themes in here, like GTK themes, GNOME, so forth, themes in your dot themes folder, and then they would show up here in your theming settings, and then you could use them to enhance your themes. And the same with icons. You could put an icon theme in here, download it from something like XFCE look or gnomelook.org, and then put them in that folder and they would show up in here. And so that would be added to your list. In Deepin 20, you can do that. So that made me really happy to see that you can do that. So if I wanna add in other themes, like say the Dracula theme, I can simply download it from gnomelook.org and then shove that theme into my themes folder. And then it'll show up over here and I can load it. So that's really cool and same with the icons. And also with your fonts, you can pop the fonts in. I don't remember if I was limited on the fonts back then, but I do remember clearly the themes, cursors, and all that. I could not add to those, and putting them in these hidden folders over here had no effect back then. So I really felt limited on the theming, and to me that was a huge drawback, a real negative for me, because I like having the ability to control my theming. So that's a big plus. That's something I really like to see now that you're able to do that. And if I wasn't able to do that before, or if other people were, I wasn't. <laughs> so yeah, that was my experience anyway. And by the way, speaking of theming, down here on our taskbar, we can right click and set our mode. By default, we're in fashion mode, but if you like a more traditional look, we can go here to efficient mode, hit that, and then it puts the bar so it's expanded all the way across the bottom and then we have the traditional launcher here and your look across here with your taskbar so everything's all just kind of laid out in a more traditional style and also since we're down here i'm going to pop that back into fashion mode because i kind of like that better also your location right here by default it's on the bottom but if you like your menu on top not a problem just hit that and there you go you got it up on top a lot of people like it there or if you're kind of like a gnome guy we can pop it over on the left and then we got it there and then of course on the right easy peasy to adjust i really like that deepen is is a lot more configurable now more customizable and so they've really come a long ways in the customization department really glad to see that and then of course the rest of our settings i think are all pretty standard here we got our network settings and very detailed though i mean we got wireless wired dsl vpn wow proxy hotspots details on your network just everything that's really cool and then our notification settings and we can e actually assign a do not disturb for certain apps if you don't want something bothering you that's where you can do it. And here's where you can toggle the icon from your dock on and off. Another big plus. And then we got our sound settings here. So this is where you want to go if you want to adjust all your sound settings and your microphone input and all that. Sound effects. And this is another thing I like is the fact that you can easily turn on and off your sound effects. And by default, your boot up and shut down are turned off. That's really nice. Back in the day, that was another thing that irritated me about Deepin is that the boot up sound was on by default and it was really annoying. And so was the shutdown. Shutdown was a little less annoying than the boot up, but still annoying. So it's really nice to see that you can turn those off. 
And if I remember right, it wasn't real obvious how you could turn these boot up sounds on and off back then. I think you had to go in and edit a file or something. That was another thing that I didn't like and that's been addressed. And now it's easy peasy. If you like the annoying boot up sound, then you can hear that every time you boot up just by turning it on <laughs> by giving it a little click so if you know someone that's using deepen and you just want to annoy them just jump in here turn that on crank their volume all the way up to 10 and then sit back and wait for the fun <laughs> downward and upward bluetooth we have turned off by default but i could turn that on if i wanted to use it very nice and then here's our date and time. And like I was saying, right now it looks like it's on GMT. Shanghai time, actually, GMT plus eight. Wow. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and change the time zone to my time zone, which I live in the jungles of Borneo, so that'd be right there. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> actually, I'm on the East Coast and in the New York time zone. So I'll go ahead and hit confirm and it looks like we need to authenticate. So I'm going to go ahead and give it my password. Then we'll confirm that. And apparently it needs a password that's correct. So I'll try that again. And there we go. All right. Now we are at 1258 PM. Actually, this is 24 hour time. So yes, very good. So now we're here minus five GMT. So I know for sure that's correct. Then we have our time settings. Again, very easy to turn on or to adjust. We got our auto sync and set up for a server. And I'm good with that for sure. And then our date and time format. So here we can tweak our formats and they make that really easy too. So I do like that. We have our long time, short time formats, date formatting, and everything can just be changed through a simple visual drop down. Really nice. And again, we're at 24 hour time, but if you like 12 hour time with AM PM, just simply toggle this little switch. And now we're down at 1259 PM. But I like 24, so I'm gonna keep it at that. And then here's our power settings. So if you wanna turn off or on your green power settings, it would be done right here. And then your brightness settings, if you need to decrease or increase, and then your mouse settings, all pretty standard, but this double click test is really cool. I like this. If you come over here and you double click, the little kitty pops up. <laughs> That's cool. Double click again, and he hides behind the little thingy there. That's a really nice touch. You know, instead of having the old generic, some kind of robotic symbol that indicates a double click, uh, they made it cute and cool, and I just love that. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, the double click test. I could probably spend an hour just playing with that. I'm easily entertained. Nice. And then our mouse settings here. If you want to tweak your acceleration and so forth, your pointer speed. So I could beef that up a little. And actually, I would kind of like to have that just a little bit faster. And then a natural scrolling setting, which I'm not really sure what that is. But somehow it feels natural. Actually, it does feel a little smoother when I have that on. I kind of like that, actually. I can tell a difference. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it there. Cool. All right. And then we have our keyboard settings. So here's our general keyboard settings. And our numeric keypad is on by default. I like that. A lot of times I get into a distro and that's off by default, which to me is kind of a pain. And I like the capsule lock prompt. So you don't have that on inadvertently. Then our keyboard layout. Right now we only have English, but I could easily add another keyboard layout, which is really great. Makes it really easy peasy. If I wanna maybe some pinion, uh, add a Chinese keyboard in there or something like that. Same with the input methods again. Uh, and control shift, which is pretty standard usually. Well, actually on some pinion, it's I think control space maybe, but uh, I kind of like control shift better really. And then you can shift between inputs. Very cool. 
then system language of course which we have at English and then keyboard shortcuts this is always important by default it looks like the terminal is control alt T so if I wanted to make that control shift enter or super shift enter I mean so we could click on this guy and then all we got to do is hit the keystroke we want for example super shift enter and then if I go off to the side here and press super shift enter there we go we got our terminal nice <laughs> so yeah and, and of course you could use any keyboard shortcut there for that you can be super T I've used that before even and then coming down a little farther see what else we got available and we also have a search that looks handy too so if I wanted to say like close window there we go and it looks like by default it's all F4 kind of like what you'd see in Windows so that's cool but if we wanted to use a different keystroke like say a combo like super shift C we could do that and now it's super shift C so if I went in my terminal here and I pressed super shift C it closes that baby and then of course you could add your own keyboard shortcuts here and assign whatever you want so very very configurable again a big plus so this is definitely an area you want to visit if you use your keyboard shortcuts a lot and I like the fact that we default here to the menu and I guess with the changing desktops I would probably maybe change that to super shift arrow rather than super super arrow and maybe I can avoid interfering with the menu there so I could try that uh, let's try desktop maybe it's workspace so here we got super arrow key so to switch to the right workspace let's try super shift arrow key oh it's already conflicting with something else hmm oh that's conflicting with move to the right so let's cancel that that's kind of what I was thinking anyway so move to right workspace if super yeah okay so I guess we were already good there yeah I don't know what I was thinking <laughs> we already had that I forgot okay my bad so let's jump over to updates and so here we can check our updates and it looks like we're already up to date so that's cool but we can manually check for updates right here and that's great and according to our settings it automatically checks for updates system updates app updates from the app store uh, our notifier is on and it will download clear package cache and smart mirror switch or switching mirrors to your fastest and then here in our about we got all our information here we're running deep in 20 20.2.2 20 64 bit with a 5.10 kernel and during install there was an advanced options where you could install with using the 5.12 kernel and I went in there just for the heck of it but it didn't work it said that the kernel wasn't present so yeah for me that didn't work but I kind of rather just stay with the default anyways when it comes to deep end then we have our addition license our famous EULA that we went over privacy policy and then our backup restore settings during install it had a backup option which I included and that was in the terminal install uh, and not, I didn't see it in the live version but during the terminal install it did have that option and I left that checked by default I think it allocated about 18 gigs for uh, backing up your system and so forth so here is where we would create our new backup for the initial backup and then you could have it incrementally back up after that which means that it'll just kind of back up anything that's changed instead of backing up everything all over again I kind of like the incremental personally that's kind of the way I would go and then finally we got our boot menu settings so if you want to turn this off your grub settings and I really like how you can just kind of look at that right from here well this is where you would do it and you can turn your delay on and off so if I was going to turn that off then it would just probably boot immediately but I kind of like having a delay just in case you got to do something and then of course your theming which you can turn on and off and it needs authorization to do that but if I didn't like that background at boot up then I could turn it off right here 
but I don't think I will because I like having a theme. <laughs> so that covers all the settings. Wow. So much stuff. This is great. And I got to say, you know, I, I really can't speak for all the licensing and, you know, there's all kinds of rumors out there. People think that Deepin is, uh, some people don't trust it because of rumors from the past that Deepin was stealing people's information and so forth, which I believe turned out to not actually be true. Uh, it was more of a rumor that was started because of misinformation, apparently, and misunderstandings. However, when I used Deepin, I never really had any issues at all, really, uh, other than at the time it was kind of resource intensive. And so I ended up ultimately switching out of Deepin and going, I don't remember where I went from there, probably Arco Linux or something to that effect, uh, because of the fact that it was kind of kind of a hog back then but right now it seems really way improved and probably because i think it probably has the kwin engine in there somewhere which is much more efficient so i gotta say this is really impressive if i was looking for a desktop that just had all kinds of bling and was really polished and just laid out so everything was right there and everything just worked this is really a great desktop to go with and really hard to beat too and one last thing, I'm just gonna change our wallpaper here. And here we have lots of options too. We can change it just for our desktop, for our lock screen, and a screensaver. So that's cool too. I'm just gonna pop in here and hit this. Wow, holy crap, that really pops. I don't think I have to go any further. <laughs> that is cool. I like the fish too. A desert scene, that's neat. Kind of reminds me of the what was it, Sierra or Mojave edition in Mac OS? So that's also kind of cool. But that first one I saw really just kind of popped. I love it. I think I'm going to go back to that one if I can find it again. Right here. Yeah, that is bad to the bone. So I'm going to go with that. And let's check out our screensavers. Wow! Check it out. It's like an arcade screensaver. How cool is that? Wow, that is neat. I love it. That would be my first choice right there, right off the bat. I wouldn't even have to go any farther. <laughs> uh, that's too cool. Uh, typically, I don't mess with screensavers, you know, but uh, that's something I'd totally use right there. That is too cool. And then we got this guy. Whoa. <laughs> that's cool. And then our rotating cube, which is kind of an illusion. Wow, that's kind of neat. Uh, and then our disco ball. Nice. And then the earth. Whoa, yeah, you know in my ET spaceship when I'm out in space, that's exactly what the earth looks like actually. A lot of people think it's round or even slightly egg-shaped, but no, it's not. It looks like this. So the flat earthers are right. It's flat, but not square. It's kind of jagged like this. And actually, it looks like you could fold that up. Oh, it is folding. Okay. Yeah. And it folds into like a, what's that, a dotetrahedron or something? There you go. Uh, that probably would be. Hmm. Nice. And then chess. All right. If you're a chess fan. And then some cool writing thingy. And more cool effects. And flying toasters. Wow, you know it's good when you got flying toasters. <laughs> That's a classic that goes way back. At least inspired by one. Nice. Snow and galaxies colliding. Wow. There's the earth. So yeah, I mean, you could kill a lot of time here just messing with screensavers. Wow. And like I said, my choice, I guess, would probably be this because I just love arcade games anyway. So <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I love it. So there's our wallpaper. What? I guess I forgot to set that. Click. All right. So now if we go off to the side, beautiful. Also, there was a wallpaper slideshow setting there over on the left-hand side, too. Checkbox. 
So check that box if you want to have a slideshow and just alternate through wallpapers and that will do the trick there. So definitely I got to give this a double thumbs up. Yep, can't hold back. It's just a uh, hands down double thumbs up for probably the most gorgeous distro out there probably. And it seems very snappy, very responsive. A little heavy on the demands. You got to have a minimum of 60 to 64 gigs from what I understand because the first time I tried to install this, I tried to put it on a drive that was pretty small. It was like 30 gigs and it wouldn't accept it. It said that there was a minimum of 64 that it needed and recommended 128. So you want to keep that in mind if you're going to run this in a virtual, you will want to allocate at least 64 gigs of hard drive space for that. Uh, everything else is pretty okay. If you're going to do manual partitioning, I think you might need a couple gigs for the EFI partition. Again, on my machine, at least this machine here that I'm running right now, which is kind of an older machine, it's got to be a good 10 years old. <laughs> However, I had to run this in legacy. I couldn't use the UEFI. No matter what I did, it would not boot. And even when I auto partitioned and everything else, I could not get it to work. So I think that's related to my hardware specifically. So if you have the same problem and you have some older hardware and it just will not work no matter what, even though it says it's UEFI and all that is set in the BIOS, then just run it legacy. I mean, it really doesn't matter anyways. It's not going to change anything as far as your experience goes. Uh, so yes, and secure mode also has to be off. So you don't want that on either when installing but that's kind of typical with most distros I think actually so there you go fantastic distro I would totally recommend it for your dear old Aunt Tilly <laughs> and anybody else that just wants a, a cool alternative to Windows and maybe they're afraid of Linux they've heard of it and they're like oh man that's for geeks and wireheads and yeah Linux are you kidding me I'll stick with my spyware infested windows. Well, now you can show them something like this and they'll be like, oh man, I gotta have this. So yeah, there you go. That is the Deepin desktop by Deepin Technology. So this is the actual Deepin distro actually. And I think overall the Deepin distro probably gives you the best experience over and above all the other ones. I think probably the next best thing would probably be the Ubuntu spin. If you try the Ubuntu DDE, if you don't want the actual original Deepin, then that would probably be my second choice would be the Ubuntu. And some people would probably argue that that would be their first choice. So both worth checking out. Absolutely. And with that, I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. That's always helpful. And if it wasn't, hit it anyway. And hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.